Style over substance. Style over substance. <laughs> Hello friends, my name is Brandon Dayton, I am your humble narrator, and welcome to another bundle banter. We've got one from Fanatical today, and it is the Quantum Bundle. It doesn't exactly strike me as like the greatest bundle in the world, but it's only $3, so let's go ahead and take a look at the games that are contained within. We've got Fall of Light, Darkest Edition, Quantum Replica, Renoir, Heimrich, The Watchmaker, Codex of Victory, Shiny, Gift of Parthax, and then In Fear I Trust Volumes 1, 2, 3, and 4. There was actually supposed to be a fifth volume, so it's somewhat of an incomplete game, but it will never be finished. We'll discuss that when we get to it, I suppose. You're going to hear me say style over substance regarding a lot of these games. But as per usual, I mean, $3 for, what, nine games? And one of the games has all the DLC. So you're basically paying 33 cents per game. Are these games worth 33 cents each? Mm, I guess that's for you to decide. So let's go ahead, jump in, and take a look at these games individually. Fall of Light Darkest Edition. Well, the game looks very pretty, and the concept of the game itself is interesting enough, but somewhere along the way, Fall of Light seems to have lost its way. Combat is the biggest rubbing point for me. A game can't pull me through on visuals alone if I'm literally nodding off to sleep because of the monotony of combat. There are a few different weapon styles, but the attack animations for almost all of them are slow enough that they become pretty unusable. Ranged enemies will backpedal, and then when you finally reach them, your greatsword will miss because the attack animation took so long to come out. It is a boring game at best and a frustrating game at worst. The story is kind of passable, I guess, but it's mostly just derivative gibberish that largely just mimics the story from Dark Souls 1. I went in with high hopes and I came out having learned a hard lesson about letting a graphical style get my hopes up. Quantum Replica Top-down stealth action in a cyberpunk universe. Hmm, interesting. Once again, the graphical style is lovely, and to my very pleasant surprise, the game itself is put together pretty well. There are plenty of weapons and tools to get you through objectives, and a variety of takedowns and abilities, AI that isn't completely horrible, and decently well-designed bosses. So yeah, I'd say that Quantum Replica is worthy of being this bundle's namesake. On the downside, there are a few points of note. While the game touts that you'll be journeying through a cyberpunk city with five sections, the actual level layout seems extremely linear. This gives designers a chance to let the players feel smart for solving a puzzle, but it absolutely obliterates player agency and makes you feel like you're just going through the motions until the next set of objectives. Not a mind-blowing game, but one of my favorites from this bundle. Renoir, another case of style over substance. The noir art style is pulled off pretty immaculately here, but that's really all that's top caliber. It's a puzzle platformer, but every puzzle platformer I play inevitably is compared to Inside, and this game falls far short of that masterpiece. Movement is clunky and unresponsive, which might not mean the end of the world, considering Renoir isn't an action platformer, but when you combine that with a story that falls far short of the depth and mystery that the noir genre is capable of, hmm. The puzzles are pretty okay, if you're into that sort of thing, but they don't really seem to fit into the narrative very well at all. It's like the game designers created the game before realizing, oh crap, we need to spice it up with something, uh, let's use puzzles. And so they just kind of shoved a bunch in there. It's not the worst game ever, but it's certainly far from being great. Heimrich. I really like the cartoony style of Heimrich. The gore is just another added bonus. The story is fairly basic, but it has a dash of black humor that really manages to pull me in and makes me thirst for more. The puzzles are fairly simple, and they can start to feel a bit repetitive after a while. You're basically using words to solve puzzles, like if there's a wall in the way, you'll need to go stand on the word cannon to summon a cannon to destroy the wall. It's not as clever as something like Baba is You, but it manages to keep things spicy enough through the animation and the dialogue. The soundtrack loop is a little short, so if you're stuck on the same part, it can begin to grate a little bit. Overall, the good far outweighs the bad in my opinion, and I'd consider this a pretty nice little indie gem. It isn't for everyone, but it managed to hold my attention, and given the amount of games I play in a month, 
Usually, not recently. <laughs> it's pretty impressive. The Watchmaker. Steampunk puzzle platformer. Oh, sounds interesting enough, but unfortunately, the game makes the mistake of telling the player when the game is over, no matter how well they perform. Games with timers always get a bad reaction, so I don't know why devs insist on making this mistake over and over again. People want to explore the world that you've created for them, and the pressure of a time limit completely squashes that urge. Of course, even if there was no time limit, there are a lot of other things in place to turn you away from Watchmaker. Poor optimization, terrible camera, severe lack of feedback or direction, platforming that leans towards difficult for all the wrong reasons, but at least there are puzzles that lead towards difficult for all the right reasons, and it does look pretty okay. They really should have called this the Style Over Substance Bundle, though. Codex of Victory! Do you like strategy games? Do you like robots? Then you might like Codex of Victory. The gameplay loop is relaxed than a lot of other more popular RTS titles, but for a slow boy like me, that's not necessarily a deal breaker. You'll do a lot of waiting in this game. Wait for resources, wait for upgrades, wait for units, but as it turns out, it's pretty worth the wait. The units are extremely varied and fun to play, and you can upgrade them to all hell, and the solo campaign is tough as nails. The story is flat and pretty bland, but the tactical combat managed to keep me invested for a decently long time. RTS base building married with turn-based combat actually turns out to make a surprisingly tasty flavor. They could have taken this game a lot further, and they absolutely should have. Playing on the same maps over and over gets boring. I think Workshop support for this game would go a heck of a long ways. It's a good title, but it seems to sort of be a victim of its own budget. Shiny. Well, Shiny looks clunky. <laughs> and it kind of is. But I'm still a sucker for side-scrolling platformers, so... I gave Shiny more than a fair chance to shine. Spoilers. It never did. I met with some game-breaking bugs, like falling through the stage for eternity, and even when the platforming worked, it still felt like a chore. If you can get used to the controls, it becomes an alright experience, but there are so many better indie platformers out there that this one really felt like a waste of time. Half the time I was just sitting there thinking to myself, why aren't you playing Dust Force or Super Meat Boy instead? Extremely basic things like moving and jumping were done sloppily, which which is a death knell for a side-scrolling platformer game. I tried to give it enough time in order for me to see past it. I truly did, because side-scrolling platforming is one of my favorite genres, but this game really does nothing but bastardize that genre. Sad. Probably one of the worst games in the bundle, right next to Watchmaker. Gift of Parthax. The words gladiatorial wizardry are enough to give me a big rubbery one basically instantly. And while I see all the faults with this game, the gameplay is more than enough to help me get over them. This is an arena fighter where you'll beat down waves of enemies with mana-based weapons. Spells and traps abound, which feels great to kill enemies with, and you can even customize your spells a bit. The allure of getting a new spell for winning is a huge, juicy carrot on a stick for me. Yes. But with all that said, the arena is tiny, and your character's pretty slow, so combat feels sluggish. There are enemies everywhere, and you can't really afford to stop moving. But you'll need to stop moving in order to cast, which doesn't make me feel like a clever mage that managed to outthink danger. I just feel like I was trading blows. Kinda why I lost interest in Elder Scrolls Blades, too, but that's a story for another video. In Fear I Trust. We're gonna lump these together because it's basically one game with a bunch of DLC episodes. It's a pretty obvious mobile port, but even considering that, it isn't completely awful. It's a shame then that the story will never actually be finished because the developer discontinued the series with one more entry to go. There are a lot of disjointed little pieces that might have fit into a larger narrative and given me a great aha moment. But considering that this series is from the same studio that developed Renoir, I sincerely have my doubts about that. Gameplay is linear, animations are basic, puzzles make less and less logical sense the further you progress into the series. Some people might tout the series as quality psychological horror, read as a story compromised of incomprehensive gobbledygook. 
Some people seem to enjoy this game, but in my opinion, it's a piece of broken garbage that will sit at the bottom of my Steam library gathering dust for millennia to come. So what do I think of the bundle? Well, <laughs> if it wasn't quite obvious, not much. Not much at all, dear viewer. <laughs> uh, for every good game, or for every passable game, there is a bad game to pair alongside it, and it just... It really doesn't lure me in, even though the price point is so super low, I can't bring myself to pull the trigger. The two or three games that I actually want from this bundle are already in my Steam library, and even a couple of ones that I don't want are in my Steam library. <laughs> so, from best to worst, Gift of Parthex is probably my favorite game in this bundle, although I can recognize the flaws and admit to myself and to you that it is not objectively the best game in this bundle. I'd say objectively the best would be probably Codex of Victory. I really like that one a lot. I will place that in the number two slot for my personal taste. Quantum Replica will be number three. Heimrich at number four. Fall of Light at number five. Renoir at six. In Fear I Trust will take the seventh slot. Shiny begrudgingly takes eighth. And at the very bottom we have The Watchmaker, which is just... It's a pile. <laughs> if you're missing some games, if you're trying to bulk out your Steam library, I guess I'd say pick it up, but really there's nothing in here that's like, hey, you have to play this right now. So, I mean, it's it's basically $3 that probably won't get used. You might take Codex of Victory or Quantum Replica for a spin, but there are so many games out there that do the same thing, but better. So I don't understand why you would go for these ones necessarily. So yeah, I'd say this is one of the uh, lesser exciting fanatical bundles to come out recently. A lot of the games in it looked really good, but then when I got into the nitty gritty, they seemed to have fallen apart. So, style over substance. Style over substance. And I'm looking for something substantial, bro. I need the nutrients. <laughs> but anyways, that's... About all I've got to say about this bundle. I hope that you like, comment, and or subscribe if you did enjoy. Check out the links in the description to Twitter, Discord, Patreon. We got giveaways going on the Discord. Big shout out to my patrons, Radimus Cisco, Damon Darkstar, Nico the Legend, my most stalwart ally. We'll keep our fingers crossed for stronger bundles to come. And you guys know that I'll be there to cover it for you. I'm also going to work on getting some gameplay together today, so... You probably should see a new video coming either tomorrow or the next day. I've been pretty busy, but uh, I'm trying to make it happen for you. I appreciate your patience. Anyways, friends, this has been Bundle Banter, the fanatical quantum bundle. I've been Brandon Dayton, your humble narrator. I thank you so much for listening. I shall see you in the next one, and until then, friends, bye-bye.